Canada Day, after going aground on Barrett's Reef at Wellington Heads, the Wanganella casts off from Clyde Key. Air compressors pumping air into the forward compartments for many months have kept the Wanganella from settling in the mud. With the arrival of long-awaited steel from Britain, repairs can now be undertaken, and the Wanganella, with tugs taking charge, is being moved across harbour to the floating dock. From May 1940 till January 1946, Wanganella played an important part in Anzac war operations, acting as hospital ship to the Australian forces. There will also be many Kiwis who have a soft spot for Wanganella, as she made three trips to New Zealand with wounded from the Middle East and Italy. It was on her first trip on resumption of the ordinary Trans-Tasman service after recommissioning that Wanganella on January the 19th, 1947, ran up and became firmly wedged on Barrett's Reef. Warping into the dock is a ticklish operation, for there is very little to spare between Wanganella and the floor of the docks. Repairing her practically amounts to rebuilding, and will be the biggest job of its kind ever undertaken in New Zealand. Even with three shifts a day, a shortage of skilled staff is another problem and it'll be at least six months before she's afloat again. When she's back in service, it'll be a good day for trans-Tasman travellers. Good morning, Mrs. Wise. Would you mind typing this commentary, please? Certainly, Mr. Faster with a typewriter than anyone else in New Zealand is Mrs. Eileen Wise of Hatai, Wellington. With a speed of 91.58 words per minute, Mrs. Wise led the field all the way in the first National Typewriting Speed Championship conducted recently by the Wellington Chamber of Commerce. 130 candidates from all parts of the country took part in the event. This is the 15th time Mrs. Wise has distinguished herself with a typewriter. And just by way of a change, she occasionally does the same in shorthand competitions. Congratulations and thank you, Mrs. Wise. Thank you. The 21st contest for the Cornwall Cup being held this year at Parramatta has brought the record number of 16 entries from all parts of New Zealand. The Cornwall Cup is sailed for in Takapuna class yachts with a crew of two boys who must be under 19 years of age. The first crew to win three races win the Cup. And with seven races sailed in the present series, the Tauranga crew share the lead with Christchurch with two wins each. The boats are 12 foot 6 long and carry about 100 square feet in the mainsail. Boats are changed round after every race, so it's crew work that counts most. By the time they reach the starting launch, the breezes freshen considerably, and it's a real flying start as they make for the first boy on a broad lead, with the wind increasing all the time. The leaders are already round the mark with their spinnaker set. Wangare gets a lovely squall and she's flying along, leaving the rest of the fleet standing. She's nearly out of control and they're fighting hard to keep her right side up. With the nearly flat bottom, these boats, in a good following breeze, plane like speedboats. Now Plymouth's got a puff, and they're overhauling Hamilton and Christchurch. Hamilton's got it now, and they're out of control. They're over, right in front of Plymouth, who just misses them. There goes Auckland, too. It looks more like a swimming carnival now, and there's plenty of work for the pickup launches. Most of the fleet are bottoms up, but there's no need for Mother to worry. The boats have watertight compartments and the crews must wear life jackets.
Christchurch and Whangarei are now leading, and the Christchurch forward hand gets the spinnaker in before rounding the top mark. Whangarei a first round, but it's too close to count at this stage of the race. They set off on different tacks for the windward leg of the course. Whangarei are sailing nicely on the wind, but Christchurch need only this race to give them three wins and the cup. Way behind are Tauranga and Plymouth. It seems to be between Christchurch and Whangarei today, and now Christchurch are in the lead. It looks like an interesting tussle between these two, but Christchurch capsize as they start their run, and Whangarei are off on their own. They've got a hard, steady breeze, and they're planing beautifully again. They're way ahead now, but they're still carrying their spinnaker right up to the mark. It looks as though the contest will still be undecided, but Whangarei also tip out just short of the top mark. Way back and not risking a spinnaker in these conditions is Tauranga. She's playing safe and only has to stay right side up and beat Plymouthen to win the cup. Plymouthen are also playing safe, and these are the only two in it now. Plymouthen are about now and heading for the finishing line, but they've a lot of leeway to make up. Tauranga show their superiority on the wind by widening the gap still further. They've sailed a careful and well-judged race and crossed the line to win the Cornwall Cup for 1948 and for the third time for Tauranga. The only other boat to finish the course is Plymouth. The boys have had enough sailing for today and there's quite a crowd to welcome them as they're towed back to the clubhouse. It's three well-earned cheers for Tauranga as they come alongside the jetty. It's a proud day for Skipper Ray Bailey of Tauranga, and he and his forward hand, Brian Hartley, get the traditional treatment for Cornwall Cup winners.